Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Before we start, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a new video. If you have any questions, please make sure to comment below and I will get back to you. All right, let's get on with the video. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on homeostasis. This video will be known as a breakout video as it will focus on one topic rather than an entire chapter. Homeostasis is a concept that gets introduced in the first chapter of most biology books. However, it continues to be put in throughout other chapters um, beyond that. Also, if you're taking anatomy and physiology, homeostasis is something that gets talked about quite often at that point. So what do we think about when... So what exactly is homeostasis? There are many terms that are used to describe homeostasis such as balance, equilibrium, stability, and steady state. Homeostasis is this idea that living organisms need to be able to maintain balance within their internal environment, especially when we compare that to the outside environment. The outside environment can change and can oftentimes change quite drastically in comparison with the internal environment. Imagine going outside and when you go outside it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit that's quite cold now you stand out there for a little bit and your internal temperature would drop from 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit which is normal body temperature and eventually also become 30 degrees Fahrenheit now that wouldn't be good for anyone and we know that's not what happens if it's 30 degrees outside your body is still going to stay 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is because there are certain checkpoints and controls that keep these things in check so that your body isn't changing so drastically. And that is what we refer to as homeostasis. It's this idea that living organisms have this ability to maintain a constant internal environment despite what happens in the external environment. This concept also brings us to the idea of feedback systems because this is how biological processes can self-regulate or maintain stability. Most of the control mechanisms of homeostasis are based on what we call negative feedback. And negative feedback is also the most common form of regulation in living systems. However, though less common, there are also biological processes that are regulated by positive feedback systems. In the next few slides, I'm gonna talk more in depth about both negative feedback and how it works and positive feedback and how it works. And hopefully um, by talking about these and giving you some examples on both these feedback systems, you will be able to better understand them and how they relate to homeostasis. So let's start talking about negative feedback, which is the most common form of regulation in living systems. What is negative feedback? Negative feedback is a mechanism that works to reduce or reverse a change in the internal environment. So what does this mean? What exactly does it mean that negative feedback is a mechanism that works to reduce or reverse a change in the internal environment? This goes back to that idea that I was talking about before that in the internal environment, there are set points. And when things shift from those set points, there are certain features that come into play that help to reverse those changes. Before we talk about specific instances in living organisms, think about your thermostat in your house, okay? That's something that everybody knows how that works and can understand um, how that can work for the certain set points. So for instance, when you set your thermostat in your house, say it's summertime, it's hot outside, and you set your thermostat for like 70 degrees inside the house, right? 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Then what's going to happen when, when it gets warmer than that 70 degrees in the house, the air, the air conditioner is going to turn on and it's going to cool down the house until 70 degrees is reached again. Okay. So if 
the thermostat registers that it's 74 degrees in the house, the thermostat kicks on and then it brings it back to 70. Why? Because the set point is 70 degrees and that's where it wants to stay. Now give or take some thermostats have a little more leeway, but give it or take a degree or two, it's going to stay at that 70 degrees. All right. On the other hand, if we turn on the heater because it's cold outside, it's going to do the reverse. When it gets too cold in the house, it's going to turn on, kick on, so that it warms the house back up, okay? Either way, both of these mechanisms are reversing a change, okay? So if it's 70 degrees and the house warms up and it's now 74 degrees, it's moved from that set point, the thermostat is going to kick on kick on the AC so that we now cool back down the house. We reverse that change. We reverse the fact that it's getting too hot, push out that cold air again, and bring the house back to 70 degrees. Okay, so that's an example of how that's going to work as far as um, a thermostat is involved okay so hopefully that gives you a little idea of what we're talking about we're going to set something and if we change from that we're going to be able to bring it back so now how does that apply to living organisms living organisms have many different set points within the body uh, within their body so that they can bring things back to where they need to be so i'm going to give you a few examples of how negative feedback can work um, within a living organism to reverse a change and understand that these are just a few examples as you go throughout your course you're probably going to learn a lot more examples of this idea. Alright so let's talk about some specific instances where negative feedback would play a role. You already know that if you go outside and it's hot and you start to get hot eventually you'll start to sweat you also know that if you go outside and it's cold, your body will start to shiver. But why do those things happen? So let's go with when you go outside and you get hot, right? That is going to cause your temperature to start rising above its set point. So homeostasis for our body or that balance, right, for body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius or that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So that's our set point. That's where the body wants to stay. But now the temperature starts to rise. You are getting hot. So it's rising above set point. Now those signals are going to go over to the brain, specifically the hypothalamus, And the hypothalamus is going to send out signals to activate cooling mechanisms, okay? So this is going to activate cooling mechanisms. And what's going to happen then is that you're going to start to sweat, okay? It's going to cause the sweat glands to release sweat. Okay, why? Why? Because when you sweat and you release that sweat on your skin, it's going to start to evaporate. And when that evaporate, that is going to actually start to cool down the body. The other signal it's going to um, create is it's going to cause blood vessels to dilate. Okay, and that causes the blood vessels to get bigger and when it get, they get bigger, it increases heat loss. That increases heat loss. So if the blood vessels get bigger and increase heat loss and the sweat glands release sweat that evaporates and cools the body, then instead of the temperature continuing to go up, we are actually working for these things to decrease temperature. So the temperature is going to decrease decreases and as it decreases it's going to go back to homeostasis okay so this is negative feedback because a change happened that changed 
uh, from the normal set point, right? We went away from the normal set point and then negative feedback worked to reverse that change. So instead of your temperature getting hotter, 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 the mechanisms that came into play in the body actually reversed those changes so that the body stayed at homeostasis. Well, what happens if we go the other way? Let's say the temperature falls below the set point. Okay, so this is colder. This is going to be colder, so it's too cool. Again, this signal goes to the hypothalamus in the brain. The hypothalamus sets our temperature, okay? And then that's going to activate warning signs, and we're going to do a couple things here, right? You remember that you shiver, so it's going to cause the skeletal muscles to contract. And that, in turn, creates shivering. And shivering allows your body to heat up. So we're going to go back in the opposite direction, right? So temp body temperature got too cold. It's getting too cold. So we want to go back to that set point. Skeletal muscles are going to contract, causing that shivering that creates heat in the body as those muscles contract. And it's also going to cause the blood vessels to constrict, All right? So blood vessels constrict. And that constriction causes the heat to stay in the body. So instead of losing heat like we did before, this minimizes heat loss. Okay? And so together, both these things, the skeletal muscle contracting, the blood vessels constricting, this is going to increase temperature. So temperature increases, reversing the change. The change was that it got too cold. We're reversing that change to increase the temperature and return back to homeostasis, okay? So these are examples of how negative feedback works to uh, reverse that change and keep the body at its set point. That's the big thing we want to do here is keep it at a set point. Now, understand that these changes are not drastic. So the temperature is going to only fall a little bit below the set point, or it's going to only rise a little bit above the set point before these mechanisms come into play so that the body always stays um, at the temperature that it's set for. So what about positive feedback? Well, negative feedback is a lot more common, and you'll see that uh, living organisms reverse their changes with negative feedback. Positive feedback amplifies a change or keeps things going in the same direction. And I'll give you an example of how that works. So before, when we talked about negative feedback, we talked about reversing the change and bringing it back to equilibrium, keeping those set points. With positive feedback, it's going to amplify a change or keep that change going in the same direction and therefore therefore moving it further away from the target of equilibrium okay so we're not trying to get back to equilibrium in this case it's actually moving it further away from the target of equilibrium as you go through your course you'll see many many more examples of negative feedback and many more specific examples of negative feedback um, but let me leave you with one example of positive feedback and how that would work to continue something going in the same direction okay so positive feedback is going to amplify that change in the same direction and one of the best examples of that is childbirth okay so in childbirth um, during labor a woman will start to get contractions and what's going to happen is those contractions are going to cause the baby's head to hit the cervix and when the baby's head hits the cervix this is going to cause oxytocin to be released All right, and that oxytocin is a hormone, and what this hormone does is it causes contractions, it intensifies contraction, contractions. So oxytocin causes contractions. So imagine this, 
the mother is having contractions. As she has the contractions, the baby's head is going to hit the cervix. Once the baby's head hits the cervix, it's going to release oxy oxytocin is going to be released in the body, causing more contractions, right? And as we see here, this loop is just going to continue in the same direction. So the contractions are going to start to get more severe as the baby's head starts to hit the cervix, as more oxytocin is released, causing more contractions. And this is just going to continue to go in the same direction. Now you can hopefully see that rather than reversing a change like negative feedback does, positive feedback is going, going to continue this in the same direction. And if it continues in the same direction, eventually there's going to be a stopping point and it, it'll, the stopping point will be when the baby's born. Okay. Why? Um, because then there's no more head hitting the cervix and if there's no head hitting the cervix then then there's going to be no release of oxytocin anymore the oxytocin levels will start to decrease a little bit and so the baby will be born and that will stop eventually stop causing those contractions but this is going in a positive feedback loop there there are more examples of positive feedback loops and also negative feedback loops. And as you go through your course, you'll start to learn this, okay? So if you have any questions, comments about this video, please make sure you go ahead and post them below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.